emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. It's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, welcome to part five of our build of the 148 scale 22 inch Eagle Transporter from Space 1999 by MPC Models for emodels.co.uk. Ugh, it gets harder every time that. Yes, hello, welcome. We're on to the next step. I uh, remember in the last step uh, we made the, the side things and we made the, the top things. And there was lots of gluing. There's more gluing in this one, I'm afraid. It's another buildy, buildy bit. Uh, in this episode, we're going to start because I don't know how much I'll get done. So we're going to start by making the fore and aft compartments. Now, I've tried to find out what these are actually called. I don't know. I've, the only thing I found is they are the fore and aft compartments. That's an access corridor. Uh, there's some environmental controls in there. Uh, the back one is what's the back one called? I forgot what the back one is called now. Anyway fore and aft compartments I've had them referred to so these are the bits that go behind the behind the command module uh, and on either side of the big passenger module in the middle or the cargo module depending on what layout you've got so we're going to get these bits done not fully we're going to break up the construction of Brit a Brit teeth words words we're going to break up the construction a bit because there's certain things we'll need to do to allow for painting so uh, as you can see here I've assembled one um, partially assembled it uh, so what we're going to do first of all is we're going to assemble one of these little doohickeys uh, and this goes on the side like this you see sits on the side there uh, but we need to get these assembled first because as you can see here there's two halves so we're going to need to assemble this and get these seam lines down the middle taken care of now I've got three of them already built uh, and they've been spoogooed so they're just curing so I'll show you how I built those and then we'll get this thing built then we'll see how long that takes so first step two halves uh, this is pretty fairly straightforward they just go together like that but more or less when I'm actually trying to do it it works so what we're gonna do is get these glued so we're gonna be using our Tamiya extra thin as always and the first thing we're gonna do is get glue on either side well, I'm going to get glue on one side. I'm going to be generous with this. Like I've said before, the beauty of this stuff is it does evaporate quickly. So if this was a regular cement, you could just put this carefully in here and have time to fiddle around with it and adjust the parts and get them in. You haven't got that time with Tamiya Extra Thin. You just have to get it on and do your thing. So I'm not being careful. If any of it does dribble out anywhere or splooge around, it's fine. It's not a problem. Uh, you can sand off any dribbles or any flowage so we'll get that in if I can line it up hello hello lining up now please there we go no we don't no oh, hello do be dried by now I only just started filming and already it's making a fool of me let's try that again and I'm locking the camera so I'm gonna get some glue in there because I forgot that bit so we're gonna get some more glue on here again notice how careful I'm being I not at all we shall now apply this there we go that's better in there why does that not want to go in there we go get those two halves together so they're loosely together 
Next thing we're going to do is we're going to start running the extra thin into the crack, into the gap. And again, I'm not being careful. I'm just putting it everywhere. Basically, I'm making a mess. I'm going to go along the top of these cylinders here, along the gap. But I'm not doing these tubes on top and the bottom yet. Just want to get it in this gap here. Dee -dee -dee. I can feel glue on my hand, which means I may have a gluey thumbprint coming up, but that's fine. Yes, there's glue on my hand. And what we'll do is the same on the other side. I'm just going to run it into this gap. Well, actually, we'll do the top part first. We're just going to squish this together a little bit. And this is, as I keep knocking the camera, because the glue's had a few seconds, it will splooge out. I've shown you this before. It will splooge out. A little tiny bit and make a little bead of glue and that will help with filling the seam filling the gap so I'm just going to push those together now we're going to go underneath and we're going to do the same again run it over the little crack do, 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 do. now I'm not too fussed about this gap here because there is an obvious step in this now it could be a miss mold or it could be designed to be that way but I'm not going to be too worried about filling that because it's a really big step and to fill that will be a right pain, but it would also, it's also not that visible once it's in place. So I get the impression it's actually by design, there's supposed to be a step there because of the way it attaches into the, into the fore and aft compartments. So I'm just gonna make sure this is all lined up. Now it's had a few seconds. You do have to futz with them a little bit just to line them up. There we go, just futz with that one a little bit, get it lined up. Cool. Okay, that's that together. I'm gonna push them a little bit. Squish. 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 Okay, now we need to do with these tubes. Again, this is dead straightforward. I'm just gonna run glue into the gap. Not a massive amount, but just enough to get it to run into that hole. I'm gonna just very gently push it together. And get myself some clampy clampy and this will push the this will push the two parts together if you can get the clamp in the right place it does help that's that one on there we'll have one there on this half and we shall put one here in the middle if I can get the angle yeah, yeah. So that should push all those together and then it'll fall off. <sighs> I can see this episode is going to be just a, uh, a mess of fiddly things going wrong, isn't it? So I'm going to get some glue in there. Gonna squish this one together. Get some glue on that bit. And again, I'm not being careful. I'm going to be sanding this. So I'm not fussed if I get dribbles of glue everywhere. It's not a problem at all that back on there put that back on there like that we'll see right should we try that again so this I'm just going to squish together there now I need to leave that to dry for about half an hour 45 minutes and then we can go in with the sprue goo for the filling but you can see here I don't know if I'll come out on camera there is an obvious step here uh, let me point to things there's an obvious step here I'm led to think that's potentially by design because the way it attaches into the, the other part of the ship. So I'm not going to be filling that in and flattening it out um, because it may affect how it goes in. So I'm happy to leave that as it is, but that's now glued. So I shall put that to one side and then I shall get the bits ready so we can make the other side of this. This is, you make two of these. This is the four. So this is the one that goes at the front and you can tell it's the four section because there's, there's a door there these bits are at the back of it and this bit is where the command module attaches so this sits on the eagle you make two of them and you might be thinking well are they different at either end no the other end is exactly the same shape but goes that way around i think so there's a door where the passenger module is and the engines would attach on the back so when you assemble it, you have to make sure these pins are on this end uh, and this has no pins on this end so that's the, that that one done that 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 one done go wow.
this has just been a complete chaos for this whole first section, hasn't it? I'm going away now. Right, I'm going downstairs to make a cup of coffee. I'll let that dry for a bit, and when we come back, we'll do this. <sighs> it's going to be one of those days. Okay, so it's time to build this bit. Now, if we look at the destructions, uh, it shows the construction here. We've done this bit. Now we need to do this bit. Uh, and it's quite straightforward. It does say times two, and it says install part B10 on front box assembly only. Part B10 is that bit way, that bit that we had way at the start that was in the middle of another piece that we left to one side. That's where the command module attaches. So we need to keep an eye on the front and the back. There isn't one of these on the back. On the on the back module we're going to make, this will be where the engine attaches because it'll be that way around. So they won't have that, but it will have that. So this is fairly straightforward at this point, but it does get a bit fiddly. <sighs> so quite straightforward. Now I have made some notes on the um, instructions here. Uh, one of my followers did tell me that this part here, when you start fitting it to the rack at the top, has some fit issues uh, and to rotate it 180 degrees I think however I didn't find any problems so but we'll we're gonna do it in such a way that we can allow for that so the first thing we need to do is to be gluing the two oh, the two halves so first and foremost we need to glue these two halves together they're quite there's no pegs in these they're just like little little dovetail joints very subtle dovetail joints you can see there they just kind of sit together. So we need to get those two assembled. Now it is important that you make sure when you're gluing these, doing both of these. Uh, on this piece, it shows this bit here, and it has that little bit of greebly at the back, which is that one, it's that stuff there. The other side is this one with the big piece of the Tiger tank at the back. So make sure you're not gluing two of these together. Uh, they probably wouldn't fit anyway, but just make sure you're gluing the right two together, because you want to make sure it's all present and correct so just be careful as you're going forward uh, that you make sure this one has that greeble and the other one has this greebles this greebles these greebles so let's just stop talking rubbish and get on with it <sighs> really is going to be one of those days today so we're just going to do an initial generous helping of glue on here like this you see and again not being careful just slapping it on because we just want to get a little bit of stick first and foremost when we put them together doesn't help that my hands are all shaky shaky as well so that's them together now that would never stay together if you did that so what I'm going to do now is take the glue and run it along that seam on the inside as best I can with my brush being just long enough and I'm going to run it around along this gap here around these parts as well. Now this is inside, you're never going to see any of this, so don't worry about getting glue everywhere. Oops, a bit too much, but never mind. Meh, can't get the brush in quite the way. Eeh. Right, there we go. Okay, so that's those. I'm going to squish them together. <sighs> so, there we are. Now, need to put the door on the back. And that's just this piece here. Uh, now the top is here, because this is where the top panel goes, and the top of the door is the thin bit. So we need to just get some glue in this little run here. Now there's no pegs for these, for the, look at my hand shaking, it's because what I'm doing is I'm resting my arm on the desk, and it's touching that nerve in your arm that makes your arm wobble like an excited dog when you tickle its belly. Um, there's no actual pins and pegs for these, they just slot in like a little chamfered edge. So just get it in, first and foremost. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna run glue along the inside edge. I hope this is on camera, I've had to move the camera as well. Get some glue on the inside edge, initially. Get glue on my thumb, brilliant. Okay, now you can see there's a bit of a little gap there, but it's a perfectly flush fit here. Little glue everywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the brush along this edge zoop, very generously and along this edge just to make sure edge I mean corner obviously obvs. and then we're just going to push and squish blow on it a little bit and again what you find 
when you squish it together some of the glue which has started to melt the polystyrene already will splooge out and that will help fill that little gap. So we're just going to hold it for a minute. If it does pop back out or if there is a particularly big gap because you've been over generous with the sanding perhaps not a problem you can always come back in with some sprue goo later and fill it and then sand it back to a nice 90 degree right angle i don't know why i said 90 degree right angle that's like redundant it's obviously a right angle if it's 90 degrees and it's obviously 90 degrees if it's a right angle can you tell it's really hot today and i'm just waffling more than normal no i don't know it's because i'm excited because i've just I just gently attached some of the parts together earlier really, on. It started to look like an eagle. I'm like, ooh, I'm making an eagle. It's no longer, no longer just a collection of random parts. It's actually starting to get that eagle feel to it. Hashtag eagle feel. Everybody use that hashtag from now on. Eagle feel. Eagle feel. Right, so that is on. Done. So there we go. You can see it's come together quite a bit and it's sealed that little gap because I've squished it. I'll put a little bit more on there just to be sure. But if there is anything left over, then that's fine. So we can put a little bit of sprue go on there. It'll need a little bit of sanding because it's a bit bubbly, but it'll just need a gentle sand just to smooth off the bubbles. So that's the door on. So you see how this goes together a little bit now. This is the front and this is the back. And in the middle here, obviously about that far apart, uh, is the, the passenger module or the cargo module. This is the end the engines will go on. So we need to be super careful now. You see on this one we've got four pins here, but none at this end. So when we start to build these tubes, we need to make sure that's all lined up. So. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to start assembling the cage around it. Now I need to go and get the little tubes ready because I realised I haven't cut enough tubes off the sprue because I'm spesh. So I'm going to leave this to dry for a few minutes. I'm going to cut all the extra tubes I need off the sprue and then we'll get that bit done. Back in a moment. Okay, right now this is where we have to start paying attention. So we have our box. We have the top piece that we made in the last episode. We have the bottom piece and we have these tubes that go up the side. Now when we make this, we need to make it basically the same way we made the first one, um, paying attention to where these little pegs are at the end. On the other one, the pegs, on this one, the pegs are at the other end from the door. So on this one, we need to make sure as well that the pegs are on the other end from the door. This is where the engines will go when it's on the ship, it'll be that way around, like I said. So you're kind of having to think in reverse. Now it sounds fairly easy, but you have to get everything the right way around. This is the top piece, and it needs to go on with this round thing at the door end. So you need to make sure that's that way. Now the top piece here has two pegs that go into these two holes. You could just slap it on. Slap it on. But you need to make sure the pegs are at the right end. So the pegs must be, if I can get it into the holes, the pegs must be at this end. There's a helicopter flying outside and it's really loud, I don't know if you can hear it. Now, you could just stop at that. However, on this piece that goes on the bottom, this bit, a bit of stuff on there, this bit needs to go again at this end. And there's another reason why it has to be that way around. There's only one peg on the bottom for this to go in, which is hard to get it into. So you have the pegs at all one end. However, there's another reason this has to be the same way, the right way around. If you see here, these are all round holes for the support rods, except this one, which is square. Now this square one is the tube that grips onto these parts. And you have to make sure that you have the square one lined up at the top and at the bottom. If you have this that way around, it's not going to fit because you'd have a square hole on the left and this one has a square hole on the right. So it's another way to make sure you've got the right way around. Right way round. Oh, I'm really struggling today. This is going to be a bit of a chaotic episode. I do apologise. So what we need to do, we're not going to glue this top piece on yet. We're going to attach this top part first. So again, visual checks. There's the back end. There's the door. The round piece needs to be at the door end. The pegs need to be at the other end. So it needs to go that way and that just locks in. 
So what I'm going to do is get that in, take my Tamiya Extra Thin, apply it generously, and then we're just going to run it along these edges as well, just to make sure it's all on. So this bit, it is critical you get these the right way around. The instructions are essentially correct, it's the same procedure for both the fore and aft compartments. But it just pays to pay a little more attention than you normally would just to make sure because if you get these the wrong way around you kind of glue in the engines on in the wrong place so that's going to be a horrible horrible thing to happen so that is now on i hope that was on camera apologies if it wasn't so that's now on so again remember and that's the one thing i forgot to point out when we did the unboxing by the way That's an Apollo Lunar Lander. It's a it's a Lem. How cool is that? When they built the original studio model, they used a, a Gemini rocket for various parts, and they used the tiny little Lem as a detail piece. So you've got the back half, the front half, and you've got another one there. How cool is that? That they even used that. And then when you get this kit, which is a reproduction of the studio model, you can kind of see it's a Lem. That's awesome. I love that. In the same way, that's like a back of a Tiger tank, I think. Well, that's the back of a Tiger tank. I think it's a Tiger 4, King Tiger or something. That, I think, is uh, it's another back of a tank, but I can't remember which one. So, yeah, I love that. I love that kind of detail. So that is now glued on. These bits sticking up. That bit's on there. So this will go in thusly. So just double-check. Door pegs pegs must be at this end so now what we can do is we can apply this to here so same as we did with the door just get a nice generous dolloping of glue on there dolloping dolloping splooge splooge just blem it on there you go that will sit in again door round thing door round thing just double check Give it a press, and then run your glue along the edge. I really am struggling today to actually not just talk rubbish, so I do apologise. I was unwell a couple of days ago, and I've not quite got my normal tea back yet. Normal tea, see that's not even a real word. I need a vacation. Right, so let's get that on there. Now, similar with the, the door, you've got a little gap here in the corner, so if you just get your glue in there and squish it together and give it a few seconds, it will kind of heal itself and seal itself and the glue will splooge out, but you can sand that back later. Right now, you can just get rid of any excess with your finger if you need to, because this stuff can always be sanded. Okay. So that is in. And they do fit, I have to say, these pieces do fit beautifully together. They're very well engineered. It's Tamiya level quality. Considering there's no pegs or pins, it's just little chamfers. So, engine end, pegs. Now, this is where it gets tricky. What we need to do is we need to attach this piece and also all the rods that go between the two. Now you can do it with the bottom piece first and stick it on the top, however this piece doesn't sit flat because of these pegs, it wobbles. So what I would suggest, and what I've done the last one, is use this piece as the, the piece to glue the rods into and then put this on the bottom. Now again you have to keep your mind in gear because you're going to be turning it round. So the way it basically works is all these rods are just simple tubes, I know it's not in focus because I'm not near enough, however two of them have got little knots, these are rolling away all over the place. Two of them have got little notches cut out and these little notches actually go around this part and these are the ones with the square pegs that go in the square holes so what we need to do is turn it upside down give it a bit of a press just to make sure it's all on what we want to do now is start applying these to where they need to go so it's easy to put the notched ones in first because they will go in the little square hole and they will line up if you do it the right way up, they will line up with that there like that. So make sure they're the right way up. I did that a bit differently so you can see it honest. I'm going to put a little glue in the hole. And I'm just going to pop that in. It's very nice that they gave you square pegs. 
I'm not going to put any glue on there just yet. But it's very nice they gave you square pegs because it guarantees you can't get them the wrong way around that way. I mean, you can't get them the wrong way around anyway because there's that bit there. But it's just more, more help for the builder. So again, get this in there. And that sits on there. Okie dokie. Now we can go around and put the round ones in. Right, apologies for having to do that cutaway there. Um, yes, as you no doubt obviously told, could tell from that, it is very, very fiddly. You need to get really up close and personal to see what you're doing, and you need both hands. Um, so yes, I did get it in the end. It's just a real pig. What I find is the easiest way to do it is to get one side in. So the glued at this bottom part anyway, get one side in, do it the right way up, get one side in, glue them, just with a bit of touch of glue to them, and then go on the other side and try and get those all lined up. It is a fiddle, it's a right pain, and yes, I had to cut away there because I was just kind of, it was, it's a struggle sometimes to do these things on camera because you're conscious of the camera there and I've got to take account of that and I can't, I can't get my head in certain places to see what I'm doing because the camera's there, so yeah. But that was, that was fiddly. That was, this one was easier, but this one was a bit more fiddly. But that's now done. So that is the most of the rear compartment or sectional pod, whatever it's called, the the aft compartment. Now we need to obviously get these parts on that go on the side like that, but we need to clean these up. Um, so I need to go and get that other piece, and I'll show you what we're doing with that. Where's the other piece gone? Uh, I will. I'll move the camera in a bit. Hang on, so you can see. Where are we? there we go so you see on this one now uh, it's all dried there is a seam line there where they were stuck together so we need to fill that and for that we're just going to use some don't know why I'm showing you it sprue goo uh, if you remember uh, I showed you this in a previous episode it's basically just a mere extra thin with a load of either pieces of sprue or plastic card melted in it uh, to make it into a thick gloop and all we're going to do with this is very very simple we're just going to carefully apply it to where we want to fill the seams. Now these seams probably will be filled just by the glue that's blued out when we glued it all together. But just to be sure, there's no harm in putting a bit of sprue glue over the top. And because this is basically just plastic card uh, melted into the glue, you're basically filling polystyrene with polystyrene. So when it dries, it should be perfectly sandable. Uh, now you don't have to, but if you can use sprue from the kit you're actually building, then that's even better. Because you're basically filling the gap with plastic from the kit. The, the glue is just a carrier for the plastic. Uh, it doesn't really matter. If you're making a, a model made out of blue plastic and you fill it with white sprue glue, it doesn't matter. 
because you're going to paint it over it. But all you need to do is basically fill that gap. Hopefully, I'm doing this on camera. Fill that gap and let it dry for about 24 hours just so it's completely sandable. And then when that's dried fully, we'll come back and we will get that sanded. I'm going to put it on the pipes as well, just a touch. And don't worry if it's a bit lumpy and rough, that's absolutely fine because we are going to have to sand this anyway. So right now our only interest is filling in any gaps. Now these parts are actually not, not don't need to do that there, these aren't actually that visible, they're behind the framework and stuff. So you don't have to do this bit and fill these in, but you know I want to, I want to make a good job of this, I need to find something to clamp it with. So that's now there, that's going to be drying, so I'm going to put that to one side. If you're using sprue glue, uh, do leave it for about 24 hours to dry. And if you're making sprue glue, like I said, it's just plastic card or sprue, doesn't matter what sprue. Uh, and just you want it the kind of consistency like that where it's not going to just dribble off the brush straight away. You want it to sort of be really thick and stodgy, just so it can fill the gap without disappearing into the gap. <sighs> right, so we're going to leave those to dry. These have been done. Uh, I shall let them dry and when we come back we'll get those sanded down. So, back in the... What? Every time... <sighs> Hello? Hi Fox, it's Pete from E-Models. How are you doing? Oh, hi Pete mate, how you doing mate? How's it going? Yeah, not too bad, busy as ever. You know what it's like. How's the eagle coming along? Yeah, it's, uh, it's coming along quite nicely, actually. Have a look. See? How cool is that? All these things. There's tons left to do, but, you know, it's all jolly good fun. Cool. Cool. Listen, we've been having a chat, and we reckon after the eagle, it'll be a great uh, idea if you would do the big 135th Dora railgun kit. You know, the one that takes up the whole shelf in the warehouse. What do you think? Oh, lots of noise. Can't make out what you're saying. Must be some distortion. Can't it? You. Fox. No, I've lost. I've lost you. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, it's all fine this end. So anyway, like I was saying, what do you think? Think it would be a good idea? Hello. Fox. <sighs> Dodge that bullet. that door <laughs> oh, I don't know that was close that was real close <sighs> anyway right it's been about 24 hours I have to apologize uh, I keep leaving my microphone off I've got my little lavalier microphone on my t-shirt I keep forgetting to put it on it sits on the desk so the last couple of sections are a bit echoey so sorry about that I always forget I get so excited about filming I film it and then I'm like oh I forgot to put the microphone on oh so yeah I'm special I told you that right anyway next section uh, I've gone ahead a little bit, but I'm going to show you what I did. The next step is to glue these little doohickeys onto the sides of these pods. I've gone ahead and done three of them, uh, but I'm going to leave the fourth one for you. Uh, now, these are just the two that I made earlier on. All I did, I didn't film the sanding. All I did was literally, after 24 hours the sprue grew dried, I just sanded them down, sanded the orbs and the tubes, so you can't see the joints. So they're in now. So we need to glue these on. Now, you need to pay attention for this bit because there's a little bit I didn't show you. On the front part, so this is the front pod where the command module is here and the passenger module goes here. You just, as they're built, stick them on. Uh, it needs to be this way around. That little tab at the bottom goes in there. Dead simple. However, um, on the rear one, it's slightly different. There are two parts, this tube here, there's two of these, and you glue these onto the ones, these things, whatever, I've tried looking these up and I'm not sure what they are. Two of them have to have this extra tube, uh, and that's the two that go on the rear pod. Uh, and the way it basically goes on is, uh, it goes on this way, and it has to sit facing like that. So there's the, there's the tube I've glued on. I didn't do this on the two on the front. 
it must sit like that and stick out a little bit because this will link up with the engines I think it doesn't actually show it in the instructions where these link into but I'm going to make an educated guess and say it somehow links into the engines so uh, on this side it glues in on that side and on this side it glues in on that side I found it easier and less risky to wait till I was at this stage of putting these on so that I could make sure I glued this on the correct side. It does show it on the instructions. It's a little bit confusing, but it does show it on the instructions here. You can see that's the top of the pod. And then it has this side is on the inside and that side is on the inside. It's that little starred tube there. And these don't go on the ones on the front. So on the front part, those tubes aren't there at all. They're just not added. So I found it easier to wait till I was at this stage figure out where this was going to go and then before I glued it onto here glue the tube on to make sure I got it exactly right so I've just glued the tube on now about 10 minutes ago so it's nice and glued in place and so now I can go ahead and glue this on and I'm going to show you a little trick you're going to need this part now we're not going to glue this part on yet but this comes in handy so let's do this get ourselves yon glue and yon applying of glue and dropping dropping so what I'm going to do, put a load of glue on here. Now these don't fit brilliantly. So if you do it the way I do it now, you'll see how it works. So we'll get some glue on there. We're going to make sure that's in correctly. I'm going to slide it on. And we're going to slide it on. There we go. Now it is a bit of a loose fit. It's very wobbly and because of that uneven step at the bottom, it doesn't fit very well so it does move around so what I do the other ones is I get it on there then I go under here with some glue go into here with some glue I also glue this bit here where it contacts the frame okay and then what I'll do last of all is put some glue down this crack here just to get it in there so it flows into that little step so because of that step in the bottom part it's not a really brilliant fit so I'll line it up reasonably straight I'll get it on there Bit more glue on these side parts what I've not done is put glue on this tube it does rest on that tube there do it on camera dear but I've not glued it in place because I might need to wiggle that around later so to make sure this is all lined up, take your side piece that we made earlier in the last episode, just loosely snap it on. We're not gluing it. And then you can hold you can hold it there and you can just make sure it's all straight and lined up. So I'm going to put a bit more glue on there. I'm not gluing it to this side piece because I'll do it on camera because this is going to come back off again. We're just using this as a template to make sure everything is in the right place. So that's going to sit there. It's going to leave this for a couple of minutes just to do its thing. I'll knock the camera and I'll blow on it. I just want to make sure these are basically horizontal and straight. It's reasonably straight. It's not quite straight. Let me just adjust that. There we go. So I'm going to leave that for a couple of minutes. Then after a few minutes when it's had a chance to set a bit, it's this bit that's kind of holding it in place really. I'll pop this off again and then I'll just get some more glue around the central section just to finally lock it in place. So you're not gluing this bit on at all. You're just using this as a guide to make sure everything's straight and true and level. And that then is that. But you start to get an idea for what this thing will look like. Let's get these side ones on and I'll show you idea for what this thing will look like when it is finished ah, ah, I'm dropping things and locking the camera oh, hang on do you know do you know that was just that that call was a shock I'm having, I'm having worrying thoughts now I'm all nervous so you get the idea anyway here's what the, the pod will look like at the end and it's starting to look like an eagle <laughs> yes awesome uh, now the reason we're not gluing these on because it does direct you to glue these on as the next step the reason we're not gluing these on is because can you imagine trying to paint all these little details and get the airbrush in there and get everything in there a rattle can with this on how are you going to paint the inside of that without just risking 
putting on so much paint that it ends up dripping and blobbing. I'm going to leave these off so that I can get this whole unit painted uh, and weathered and then when it comes to getting these on, these will be painted separately as well, when it comes to putting it all together I can just scrape the paint off the little pegs and they do fit really well and they do actually sit in place really well so it won't take much glue at all to get that on there because there's no support structure apart from these pins obviously so we'll need to be glued but they can just be glued on afterwards it's just gonna be a nightmare to paint if I if I if I put these on now it's gonna be a living hell so we're just leaving them on loose but you get an idea now what it looks like and that's cool and that's kick-ass so I'll just give this a quick sprinkle of the glue again I'll just go on these edges just to reinforce and that's the beauty as I've said many times before the beauty of this extra thin is the way it wicks into any little cracks and grooves worms its way into all the contacting surfaces and does its magic so that should now be reasonably glued let's get that on there and there you go it's done so that's that done right so that's going to do it for this episode i think because the next step after this is starting to build the pods for the feats and the feats itself uh, and we're going to, need to do a bit of pre-painting on the feats i think or a bit of pre-coloring so we'll leave it here because i don't want this episode to be like two and a half hours long uh, but yeah when we come back we'll start on the pods and we'll see if we can get the pods and the feet done but we'll, we'll see how it goes um, but yes thank you so much for watching I'm starting to get an idea now what this looks like tell you what I'm going to do tell you what I'm going to do you know what I'm going to do you know what I'm going to do should put this together and give it a really rough look let's get that on there okay right, that's there now let's get the spine I'm going to move the camera out so you can see all this Move the camera out quite a ways. Adjusting, adjusting. Right, let's see what happens. Let's see if, make sure everything fits. So we're gonna put the top on the glue because of the reasons. We're gonna plop that on there. Diddy. And we're gonna plop this on here like this, you see. And we'll just get a little bit of a feel of what this will look like. It's only loosely put together, but we get a little bit of an eagle feel. Remember, hashtag eagle feel. Everybody should start using that from now on. So, yeah, just making sure it all fits, everything's nice and straight, all looks good to me. So yeah, and if we put the pod on the end, I won't attach it, but you can get an idea now for how big this thing's gonna be. I've got, I've got to fit this on my workbench, and paint it and everything. It's a big chicken, and I've got. Don't forget, I've got the engines, which are probably just as long as the, as the the command module to go on this end. So yeah, let's just change that white balance for you. It's a bit explosive. Where are we? There we go. It's better. So you start to get a feel for it now. How big this thing is, and how detailed, and how massive it is. <sighs> Starting to come together. Hashtag eagle feel. But yes, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. As always. Uh, as you know, this was filmed for emodels.co.uk, so do go along to emodels.co.uk and check them out. Uh, they've got tons of stuff for sale. They've got kits, tools, paints, books, all kinds of bits and bobs. Check out the Hobby Zone storage system if you've got a particularly cluttered work desk. Go in and just look up Hobby Zone. There's all the storage units that I use that you can't see because it's off camera. There you go. All those little storage units. They're all awesome, they've got all those. Tons of stuff, it's a brilliant store. I think it's the UK's best online model retailer. So there you go. And that's not just because I'm doing these videos for them. If I didn't think that, I wouldn't be doing these videos for them. That's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode. Take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. And until next time, adios amoebas. <laughs>